Health is nature. This is what Dr. Andrew Taylor Still, the founder of osteopathy, concluded over 100 years ago. This is a simple statement, health is nature. But osteopathy is based on this concept. This is just as true today, if not more true than it was at Dr. Still's time. An osteopathic physician understands that health is inherent in each and every human body. Furthermore, Dr. Still wrote, To find health should be the objective of the doctor. To find health should be the objective of the doctor. Anyone can find disease. So from the osteopathic perspective, the answers to health lie in the human body functioning in the way nature intended. So how does an osteopathic physician find health? Well, they're guided by osteopathic principles. Following these principles, the osteopathic physician uses their hands or other means to come up with an appropriate treatment. Osteopathic principles are not necessarily unique. Dr. Still felt he was simply describing the laws of nature and a truth that was as old as the universe. The close interrelationship between structure and function. This is the first osteopathic principle that guides an osteopathic treatment. Structure and function. Superficially, this may seem like a mundane statement, but osteopathic physicians will spend their careers digging deeper into this concept. They will aim to understand living, dynamic anatomy down to the smallest, most minute details so they can best understand what it is they feel under their fingertips. Let me give you an example of this. I'm going to call this patient Amy. And for two years prior to coming to my office, Amy woke up every morning, adjusted in her sinuses, and unable to open her left eye. Not because her eye was swollen shut, but it just would not open. It would take about half an hour after waking up for her eye to be able to open. Now, Amy had been through the gauntlet of tests and seen every specialist before seeing me. And no one could figure out what was wrong with her. As a result, Amy was beginning to question whether all of this was in her head. My evaluation of Amy, I could feel where the bones of her head were jammed and other structures were affected. And I worked to determine how all these restrictions in her head and throughout her body were culminating to produce Amy's symptom. Then listening to what her tissues were telling my fingers, I found and released the tension in, in the sutures, nerves, membranes, and ligaments of her head to restore the normal structure in order to enhance the normal function and bring out the health that was already present there. Once I was done working with her body to this capacity, the next step was to allow her body to continue working with the changes that had taken place. Instantly, Amy felt better getting off the table. She described feeling lighter, less tense, even standing up straighter. The next day, Amy woke up, not feeling congested. For the first time in two years, Amy woke up and opened both eyes. Now this was not the end for Amy's treatments. For the first time in a long time, there was hope. And that's an example of structure and function taken to a level that few ever know to go. Body is a unit, with health comprising of mind, body, and spirit. This is the next principle. Dr. Still wrote, We look at the body and health as meaning perfection and harmony. Not in one part, but in the whole. So if you affect one part of the body, you have to have an effect everywhere else. And so where the pain is experienced is not necessarily where the source of the pain is. Nicole had upper back pain and stiffness, and she had it for years. People had tried to resolve it. They had tried popping her back. That was really painful and really didn't work for her. She developed a fear of people trying to pop that area. And when she came to be seen, it really wasn't for her back, but for another issue. In fact, she specifically neglected to mention her back with the hope that it would be overlooked. However, on examination, it was not. But this time the approach was different from other practitioners. By careful examination, it was found that the problem was not really in her upper back, but in one of her organs, namely the spleen, that was not correctly positioned where it should. As a result, the connective tissue around her spleen, the fascia, was being wound tight, putting pressure as high as into her rib cage. The spleen was then repositioned to its normal place, and then the upper back pain instantly resolved. And this was years ago, and to this day, this pain has not come back. If no one had figured this out, do you think her pain would have ever gone away? 
So where Nicole experienced her pain was not where the source of the pain was. The next concept is the inherent self-healing capabilities of the body. The osteopathic physician does not cure disease. The osteopathic physician works with the body to help it heal itself. After a treatment is finished, changes can be felt for days or even weeks as the body continues to work with what we start. Gloria suffered from bladder issues for close to a decade. When I say she suffered, I mean she suffered, and it was only getting worse. Her life revolved around her bladder. Wouldn't yours if you had to use the bathroom 20 plus times a day? Gloria was afraid to drive, go to the movies, to go on trips. She had tried every medication, seen every specialist, and still no one could figure out what was wrong with her. Her internist was suggesting a psychiatry consult or looking into a trial surgery. I know there is something wrong with me. This is not in my head, Gloria told herself. I had just started my medical training, so I wasn't in a position to help her. But I said to her, I said, Mom, you should try an osteopathic physician before you do any surgery. Out of desperation, not knowing where else to go, she tried it. It wasn't until an osteopathic doctor realized she had a twist in some of her organs and restrictions elsewhere in her body that were not allowing her body to function normally. And once those were resolved, she was finally able to get a change with her symptoms. Once this doctor corrected the problems, her symptoms were better instantly. And then over the next couple weeks, they went away completely as the self-healing mechanisms of her body took over. About a year later, when Gloria came back to see the doctor, you see, this doctor was in another state, so she couldn't come to him regularly. He asked her, Gloria, how is your bladder problem? And she stared at him with a puzzled look initially, and she said, what bladder problem? See, she was there for a different reason. Her p capacity for health with her, with her bladder issue was always there. Her body just needed some help in expressing it. But once it was found, life went on as if nothing had ever happened. This is an example of the self-healing capabilities of the body. Structure and function. The body's a unit. And the inherent self-healing mechanisms. These are the principles of nature that an osteopathic physician uses to design an appropriate treatment to find health in their patients and change their lives. If you would like to discover how osteopathy can help you, then visit my website at www.osteopathyny.com, sign up for my newsletter, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, a life without pain is possible.